Good evening and welcome to our light party. It is really great to see you this evening. If you don't know who I am, my name is Keith. And if you do know who I am, my name is still um, Keith. Anyway, this evening we're going to have a variety of different people lead us through some challenges, some prayers, a very special Bible story and some amazing crafts amongst other things. And our hope and prayer is that tonight we can encourage you to know that Jesus is your friend and that when difficult times come, we can trust Jesus. There's all sorts of scary things going on around us and Halloween, which is this evening, tends to celebrate the scary, the dark things. We want to celebrate the one who brings us light and life. We want to celebrate with you the good news about Jesus. So I hope and I pray you're going to have lots and lots of fun tonight. Now I know some of you are thinking, why is Keith wearing this silly hat? Well, it's always good to be prepared because you never know when the storms might come and difficulties might hit us. So tonight I've got my very special umbrella hat on and as you'll see it might have come quite useful for Jesus' disciples as well. Well, I know you don't want to hear me talk too long, so I'm going to say a little prayer and then we'll get straight on with our light party. Why don't you join me? If you're able to, I wonder if you could close your hands and close your eyes and we say, Dear God, thank you that this evening we come to celebrate the good news about Jesus. Help us to have a great fun evening learning about you and learning to trust you when difficulties come, when storms hit and when we feel frightened and afraid. Lord Jesus, thank you that you are with us and that you call us to take courage because you are God's Son, our Lord and Saviour. So bless us this evening, we pray. Amen. Have a great evening. See you later. Bye. challenge for you. In our story today we're going to be hearing about some people in a boat in a storm. So what we need to do is using items that you can find in the downstairs of your house, can you build a boat that you can sit in and can you make sure that you are dressed as if you were going to be in a storm. I'm going to go and find some helpers now and go and do it. You've got one minute.
Jesus walks on water. Mark chapter 6, verse 45 to 52. Jesus made his disciples get into a boat. He had 12 disciples. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. He told them to go to the other side of the lake whilst he dismissed the crowds. After he had said goodbye, he went up a hill to pray and the disciples sailed away. When evening came, the boat was in the middle of the gray lake and the sky grew grey. Out of nowhere, whirling winds swept across the lake, fierce and strong, like a hurricane. A blinding flash of lightning lit up the sky. Thunder roared right overhead. The storm blew the water into towering waves. The hull of the little boat up, 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 and sent it hurtling, crashing down, down, down. The fishing boat was blown and buffeted and tossed and turned back and forth and up and down and left and right and round and round and... When Jesus saw that they were straining at the oars against the adverse wind, he came towards them, walking on the sea. When they saw him walking on the sea, they thought he was a ghost. No, I didn't say he was a ghost, I said they thought he was a ghost. Thank you. They were terrified! Ah! Oh, oh, ah! Immediately he said to them, Take heart, it is I, do not be afraid. And he got into the boat with them. Suddenly the wind stopped and they were astounded. The end. We've just heard a brilliant retelling of the story from Christine and the boys uh, from Mark 6 about Jesus walking on water. Now, a lot of you might have heard that story before and are going, yeah, yeah, that was really great. I know that. So let's have a go at imagining what it might have been like to have been there to have been one of Jesus's friends in the boat. If you haven't already, make yourselves a boat from cushions or boxes or something. Maybe you even have a real boat. Pause this until you are all sitting in your boat. Maybe even get your parents in the boat too. Now get rid of all your fidgets, dim the lights and maybe close your eyes before we start the story so you can really use your wonderful imaginations. Let's ask God to help and to guide our imaginations. Heavenly Father, would you give us um, minds that are attentive to you, free from distractions, and would you guide our wonderful imaginations? Thank you. If you're sitting comfortably, then we'll begin. Imagine you're one of Jesus' friends, one of his disciples. Maybe you used to be a fisherman and are comfortable in boats and being out on the Sea of Galilee. Maybe you used to be a tax collector or a market trader and aren't so used to boats. Jesus has told you to set off without him to the other side of the lake. As you set off, you can hear Jesus saying goodbye to the crowd and sending them home. You hear the slap of water against the side of the boat and the wind in the sail snapping the ropes in the breeze. You see Jesus heading off into the hills. Do you wonder what he's doing? Do you guess he just wants to be alone to talk with his father? You think over everything that has happened today of the massive crowds, of the sick people that Jesus has healed just by speaking. You remember the astonishment, or was it something else, of Jesus telling you to feed them and how impossible that was. You remember how Jesus divided the little food you had and then he seemed to make food from nowhere 
because everyone had plenty to eat. You settle down in the boat, or are you one of the sailors attending to the boat and making sure you're going in the right direction? The journey takes about six hours on a good day, so you might make land by late evening if you're lucky. It's getting dark now, quickly, as it does here, and the wind is getting stronger and the waves start to really thwack against the boat. Do you wonder if it's going to rain or is this exciting? It's the middle of the evening now and the breeze is really getting up and so are the waves. Perhaps you think this is okay as you've done this journey loads of times before or maybe you're starting to feel a bit queasy. Maybe you try to get some sleep. Maybe you're trying to chat above the sound of the wind with the other disciples about all that's happened with Jesus. It's a bit later now and the night is dark. The wind is getting so strong that the sail can't be used and some of you are going to have to start rowing. The waves are getting quite big for this size boat. Perhaps you're getting wet from the spray. Perhaps you're seasick. You know it's not going to be an easy journey now. You're not going to get there by midnight. Perhaps you're getting tired. Perhaps a little worried. It's way past midnight now. It's a horrible night. The wind is howling and the waves are so big, the boat is struggling. You are cold and a bit wet. Everyone is getting tired from rowing. Perhaps you're afraid, even if you have done this journey lots of times. Maybe only a little anxious or maybe you're very afraid you might drown. Perhaps there's quite a bit of water getting into the boat. Perhaps you're having to scoop up the water and tip it over the side. It's getting difficult to sit still, let alone stand. The boat is being tossed by the waves and it's a long way from the top of one massive wave to the bottom. The boat shudders as it hits another wave. Perhaps you wonder how long you or the boat can survive this pounding. You look across the sea and see something. What is it? You shout to your friends above the noise of the wind and point. They've seen it too. Something moving across the waves. Then you lose sight of it as the boat shoots down another wave. Up to the top of the wave. There it is again. Closer. And an eerie, an eerie figure. Down into another dip. Then you see it again. The shape of a person. But walking on top of the water? No one can do that. What is it? Is it a ghost? Is it something evil? Something unnatural? Will it hurt us? You're afraid. Very afraid. All your friends are afraid very afraid. Do you just stare? Do you try to hide? Are you afraid to look away? It's getting closer now. It's speaking. You can just hear it above the howl of the wind. It says, have courage, it's me. Don't be afraid. You recognise the voice. It sounds like Jesus. You look closer. It looks like Jesus. Maybe it is Jesus. How is he walking on water? Peter thinks it's Jesus. How about you? Are you still afraid? Are you afraid because he can walk on water? Are you okay now Jesus is here, even though the boat is still crazily going up and down and the wind is still howling? Jesus climbs another wave and gets nearer to the boat. You're all staring at Jesus. Then he climbs over the side and into the boat. Straight away the wind stops and it's calm. You're all looking at Jesus. What are you thinking? Is your mouth hanging open, mouthing wow? Are you wondering how he did it? Are you wondering who he really is? Are you wondering if you are safe? Are you wondering what he's going to say to you? Or are you wondering something else? This song's got some actions. It goes something like this. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise. You will carry me safe to shore. And then we do some swimming. So any kind of dancing that you can do in there is great. Let's go. In my wrestling and in my doubts 
In my failures you won't walk out Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse Shining in the darkness, I will follow you Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse I will trust the promise to shore I hope you're having fun tonight. Because we're doing the story of Jesus and the storm and the boat, I thought we could make a storm in a bottle. Can you see the little boat floating around? It can get really, 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 really stormy in there. So if there's a storm coming, I'd better go and get ready, hadn't I? See you in a minute. Oh, it's hard getting ready. Oh, dear me. Oh. Nearly ready. Nearly ready. All oh, right. I'm ready for a storm now. Got my... Oh, got my wetsuit on. Got my goggles. All ready for a storm now. So, to do the storm, get it so you can see what's going on. Uh, there we are. So... We're going to need our bottle of water. If it's full already, what you need to do is unscrew it and I'll have a drink or otherwise get rid of some until you've got about half a bottle. Then put the lid back on for a bit and take off the label. So there we've got our half bottle of water. 
Then we look in our little envelope and what's in there? We find we've got a little boat. Now I want you to be careful with this boat because it's got sharp things on it and I don't want you to hurt your fingers. Do you see on the bottom there's two drawing pins? Now I wonder if you know why they're on there. I'll give you a minute to think. I wonder why I might have put two drawing pins on the bottom. Well I'll tell you. It's to make the bottom of the boat heavier so that when it tosses around in the water it should stay the right way up. So that's our little boat. And we've got some shells. Oh goodness me, if they were to scale, can you imagine the size of creature that would have to be in there? That would be a very big sea slug or something like that. We've also got some bits of paper. When we put those in the water, the, the dye will come out of that and it will colour the water. We've also got a piece of paper with waves on it and the verse which says have courage it's me don't be afraid that's what Jesus said to his disciples in the boat wasn't it now you can use the bits I've made or you can make your own you can make some fish you can make a boat out of a bit of cork or I'm told that the wax from a baby bell makes a really good boat and use this piece of paper but even better cut a piece yourself and draw your own waves and write your own verse on it that would be even better and when you've done all of that, it's very easy to put it together. Just open the bottle again and put in the bits of paper and the shells and the boat and put the lid on tightly. Give it a good tightly. If you've got somebody in your household who might, you think might drink it, it might be a good idea to put a bit of sellotape round the top just to stop somebody accidentally drinking it because you don't want to drink it once it's got the blue dye in it and there we have it can you see you shake it up and the water's turning blue and there's the little boat and then what we're going to do get some prit or some other glue prit's very good though and stick on the piece of paper to remind you why we're doing it and there we have it we've got a boat in a storm in a bottle isn't that cool that's very good isn't it i hope you enjoy that mm -hmm. ah there's a ghost oh no Good morning. We present a scientific investigation by me, Professor Ronald, on the subject of trained aquatic reptiles of the order Testudines. Apparatus. For this experiment, you will require safety equipment to wit one pair science specs and one science coat. You will also require a Bunsen burner, two aquatic reptiles of the order Testudines, also known as turtles, and a large glass of milk. Ronald, what on earth are you doing? This time? Well, obviously, I'm doing my science presentation about training turtles. Obviously. Why didn't I guess that? And why are you wearing a nurse's coat? This is the best I could do for a science coat. Do you like my science specs? Um, I think they're called safety goggles. Science specs! I'm filming it for school. Ooh, can I be in it? I suppose you could be my laboratory assistant. Is that because women can't be scientists? Only assistants to male scientists? I sense we're getting into thorny ground here, Alice, so I've had a new idea. How would you like to be my co-scientist? Ooh, yes, that sounds much more appropriate. Thank you, Ronald. Now, 
What are we going to do with these turtles? We are going to train the turtles to swim at the surface of the water with me standing on their shells so I can walk on water huh? like Jesus did. Huh? This is bonkers. What? That's it. Why? Well, actually, I think you'll find that's how Jesus managed to do it. The disciples thought he was a ghost, but that's just silly. It's much more likely that he was walking on the shells of a pair of highly trained sea turtles. Um, Ronald, the Sea of Galilee is an inland lake. All right, freshwater turtles then. Ronald! Or maybe large fish. They have some pretty big fish in the Sea of Galilee, don't they? Ronald! Or maybe a couple of octopuses. Octopodes. Octopi? Actually, I think you'll find it's octopuses. I don't think it was any of those things, Ronald. This is my experiment, Alice, and we're doing it my way. OK. Let's go on, then. Where are the turtles? I was hoping you could provide them. Oh, sure. I'll just go and rustle up a couple of turtles for you to train. This is silly, Ronald. Jesus didn't walk on sea turtles. He actually walked on the water. It was a miracle. I'm sure we've talked about Jesus and his miracles before. Remember the time you thought he was a magician? Oh, yes. That does ring a bell now you mention it. So you think this is another one of those miracles? Actually, Ronald, yes, I do. So he really did walk on water? Yeah, he did. Not a ghost. Not walking on turtles. No hidden piece of super thick glass supported just below the surface of the water. No, none of that. He actually walked on the water. <gasps> Inflatable sandals with buoyant air pockets in the soles. No! I think he would have found it quite hard to balance and they didn't have plastic in those days. So not that. No! Ronald, not that. He really walked on the water. That's pretty amazing. I'm a bit nervous to ask this, but what was the Bunsen burner for? It's for science. You can't science without a Bunsen burner. Fact. Uh-huh. And the milk? It's thirsty work training turtles. You know, when we first started to talking about Bible stories years ago, you were the smart one, and I was the one who always got things wrong. It seems to be the other way around now. I won't hear a word said against my powerful brain. I'm ready. Where did they go? Let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you that you're always with us, that you calm all our fears. Thank you that your name is the best name to call when we're scared. Lord, you're the light of the world. We love to celebrate you, light of the whole of planet Earth and beyond. Even the darkness is not dark to you. Lord, sometimes the voices in our world, even our own negative words, do a great job of making us feel anxious and defeated. May you give us wisdom to choose to tune into your voice as you lead us away from panic and fear. Help us to stand strong in your armour. May your word, what you speak to us, be our light and a delight. Help us to take in your word in a fresh way. When we're scared and lonely, feel unloved or insignificant, thank you, you're the God who sees us right where we are and you're always there to talk to and you love us with an unshakable love. May the truth of what you say of your love wash over us and when scary things happen in our lives and bring us to crossroads, help us to choose to run to you and not to run away from you. We thank you for the opportunities that scary things bring, like giving us a deeper adventure of trusting you even more. Lord Jesus, help us to be like those three friends who went through the really scary, fiery furnace. However big and scary things may be, God, you are there, you are great, and you can rescue us. And even if you don't rescue us in the way that we think, you are still God. When we're facing unexpected bad news, when we're scared, when our hearts are broken and crushed, May your light just flood our hearts. May you soothe our pain when we're in the dark and scary time of losing someone we love. And when things feel completely broken, as if they can't be fixed, you're the one who makes all things new and you can still create some pretty amazing designs with broken things and you can do the unimaginable. And when things feel chaotic and uncertain, Lord, remind us that nothing is a surprise to you. You're consistent. If we're living and breathing today, 
God, you're still great. You have great purpose and plans in store for us today. Today is a good day to be safe in you. When our minds spin out of control with stress, worrying about problems, even problems that don't exist yet, may you rewire our thinking processes, God. And when we're scared that we've drifted too far from you and we've lost our way, you're still there. Thank you. Thank you that you're the one who comes to find us and help us to make things right with you. When we are scared of what others may think of us, show us how to live for you. And when we don't have any more energy and we're just tired, God, may you make us strong. We pray for a fresh refill of you, Holy Spirit, so we can press on. And when we're scared of making wrong decisions or making a really big mistake, we thank you that you're the one who loves to guide our steps and you won't leave us to stumble in the dark. May you give us wisdom to make decisions that line up with your perfect plans. You are God. You cannot fail. Lord God, you see our hearts and you know all our yesterdays, all our todays, all our tomorrows. So we're sorry for the times when you've quickly forgotten what you're like and how you've rescued us and how you've made us brave and bold before. Lord, I pray that you may help us to remember what you sacrificed for us on the cross and make us bold in sharing the truth of what having you in our lives is like so we can win, win, win against the scary things. Thank you. You teach us how to relax when we're stressed out. Thank you that you top up our strength when we're empty. Thank you that you guide us when we're confused. Thank you that you're the one we can keep our eyes fixed on. Even those times when our eyes are actually filled with tears, God, we can still fix our eyes on you. We just pray your peace over our lives, over our families, our friends, our homes, our streets, our neighbors, our community, over our town. We pray your presence in the middle of all our situations. Help us to be a blessing to those around us in how we carry your light and reflect you to those we know and meet. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you're always good. You're always loving. You're always kind. Thank you that your faithfulness goes on and on and on and on and on and on. May your light flood our lives so that we know that our most rock solid, eternal, surest safety is in you. We pray these things in your name, Lord Jesus. Light up the whole of planet Earth. Amen. Well, hello. I do hope you like my camouflage umbrella. There's a man called Bear Grylls who knows an awful lot about camouflage. He used to be a soldier, but now you might have heard he's an expert in living in the wild. Most of us aren't like Bear Grylls when we're faced with scary situations. Actually, most of us are a bit more like chicken fritters. We get scared about all sorts of things. Some of us get scared about creepy crawlies. Some of us would run a mile if we were faced by a Sydney spider here. Some of us get scared about heights and maybe falling. All of us get scared of things like going to the dentist. And some of us also get scared of the dark. We get like the disciples and we can panic when things seem strange and scary. And yet Jesus says, do not be afraid, I am with you. Even in the darkest times, Jesus says, do not be afraid, I am with you. Even when emergencies come from all sorts of different situations, Jesus says, I am with you, do not be afraid. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. We do hope that you have really enjoyed our light night together. And when you actually go out this week and you see lights, you remember that Jesus is the light of the world. And even when things seem really dark, he's with us and he says, do not be afraid, I'm with you. You're welcome to join us online for our Sunday gatherings at 10 a.m. or at 11 a.m. for our children's activities. See you there.